Hi, I'm Andy, and this is a video about Godot Game Engine, uh, how to make uh, new instances of objects, or something that Godot seems to call instancing. Um, we're in the middle of making a little game. Um, if you watched the last video, you will have seen us figure out how to make objects that you can drag and drop, um, but they also live in the physics engine. Uh, and so that was the second video in this series. The first video was how to make some objects with um, that just um, bounce around and uh, move under gravity and stuff. So now you can see we've got objects that bounce around and you can drag and drop them. And actually, I can sit here and play with these objects for quite a long time. So I'm feeling like maybe this game's going to be fun. Um, having said that, if the idea that um, I'm currently favouring works out, it might be that what we're actually making here is the level editor rather than the actual game. But a game without a level editor is only half a game. So. Um, uh, whatever we're doing, it's fun, and hopefully, uh, if you have as much fun as me fiddling about with objects that move under gravity and bounce off each other, um, you're going to enjoy the game. Um, or well, the level editor. So, um, in the spirit of this being the level editor, which I think is what it's going to be, um, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to put a little menu over on the right hand side of the screen where you can pick up a new triangle or a new square and obviously in the real game there'd probably be other shapes as well um, so this is a video about how to make new instances of um, existing objects new copies uh, make new stuff and not just have stuff that's already there on the screen um, so the way that you do that in Godot is you do something which it seems to call instancing um, but in order to understand um, uh, in order to be able to make an instance of something uh, it needs to be a scene and uh, you might be asking yourself what a scene is like a, a thing with loads of objects in it um, but actually um, a scene is a is kind of a more much cleverer wider concept in Godot than you might first imagine basically anything you like can be a scene so just one shape can be a scene um, or multiple shapes or, the, or a whole level like we've got here so what we're looking at here is a scene but that scene can actually be built up from other scenes so what we're going to do um, is we're going to turn the square and the triangle um, we've already made into separate scenes which will mean they'll get saved in a separate file um, and why are we going to do that? Well the reason why we're going to do that is because once you've made them into a separate scene you are then allowed to make new copies of them, new instances of them. Um, so we'll see how to do that. So um, let's go straight into that. So if we click on the square we can see um, it's highlighted in the tree here. Um, so that's our square and uh, at the moment this is just an object inside this scene that we've called world. Um, but now let's turn it into its own scene. So the way we do that is we right click on it and we say save branch as scene. So branch just means bit of the tree. So turn this um, object into a, its own scene. So when we choose that it offers us a file name for it and the file name square seems fine to me. So let's do that. So nothing much has changed except now you can't expand this square um, in this tree because it's, a, it's an object in itself. It's uh, it's no longer just part of this tree. You can still edit square, and we'll, I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, but first, let's turn a triangle into a scene as well. So we do exactly the same thing, save branch as scene, and then click save, and now triangle is also its own scene, which means we can make new instances of it. Um, by the way, I'm pretty sure you can take a scene and kind of copy it into this scene, possibly by doing this merge from scene button, but uh, let's not worry about that now. So now we've, um, we, we're able to make new instances of square and triangle. And actually, if we want to, I might show you that. We can make an instance here in the menu. So let's say, let's do that. Let's make another instance and then I'll get rid of it again. So if we say instance child scene, um, and we make an, oh no, no, not that. If we click on shapes and we're going to make another instance inside shapes, so now we can say instance child scene, choose what scene we want to make an instance of, let's say another square. Now we've got another square, and if I drag that, you can see we've now got two squares. Well, we didn't want that, we don't want to make uh, instances at design time, we want to make instances when the game's actually running. So I'm just going to delete that again, just to show you. Uh, but yeah, so now you can, um, now that your these objects are actual scenes in their own right, 
um, you can make new instances of them. I'll just show you how you can still edit things even when they're separate scenes. So if I, I click on that and I right click and I say um, open in editor, I guess. No, that wasn't it. Yes, it was it, it was it. So now you can see this tab at the top now says square because we're editing this scene which is called square. And now you see I've got a tree which I can open up and I've got all the stuff that makes a square in there. So that's how you go and edit square. Well, we actually don't need to edit square because it's fine as it is. We've already finished with it. What we're going to do is change the code of our world um, so that when you click something on the right hand side here, it actually makes a new instance of square. So we'll add a little button that can do that. And actually, we probably want that button to look quite a lot like the square that's already there. Um, so let's add a new node, which is going to, I'm just going to call menu, which is going to have all the stuff that's going to turn into a sort of little menu on the right hand side for us. So add a child node, I'm just going to make make it an instance of node, so just nothing nothing special, just because we're using it as a folder. Rename that to menu, and then inside menu we're going to make a couple of buttons so you can make a square and a triangle. So we click plus, and these, these things that we're making are not going to be physics objects, so they're not going to fall under gravity or, or bump into things or anything like that. They're just going to be um, area 2D, which just means it kind of sits there, doesn't, uh, no physics simulation or anything happens. And we're going to call this choose square. Um, and in a minute we'll move it over to the right hand side, like I said. By the way, the way I've implemented this, this name is extremely important because um, we're actually going to chop off the word choose and then the word square is going to tell us what we're going to make an instance of. Um, that's a, a not the neatest way of doing it, but it seemed to me uh, the quickest way of doing it. And because I'm not that familiar with Godot yet, I couldn't immediately see um, a better way. So I've left it like that for now, but I'll probably change my mind at some point. So um, now at the moment, at, like with any shape that we make, um, choose square doesn't actually have um, anything you can see or anything you can touch. So we want both those things. Um, because in a minute we're going to find out whether you clicked on it by touching stuff and obviously we won't be able to see it. So let's add in some stuff into there. Let's add a collision area 2D. Collision polygon 2D, sorry. Collision polygon 2D. And just like we've done with other things, we're going to draw the shape of that. And I can see I haven't turned the grid on, so let's turn the grid on and try and reposition those dots to somewhere a bit neater. So we're going to make a square and it's going to look pretty much like our other square because we want it to look like, um, it wanted to look sensible when you click on it you actually get a copy of that other square. So now we can collide with that. Um, let's add into it also a polygon. Um, and again we'll draw that so that it matches the shape of the collision shape and I'm going to make it it's pretty much the same as the, um, the square but I'm going to make it just a slightly darker color so I'm going to do, um, just so that it's um, it, it kind of fades slightly fades into the background so now I've made that thing it's called choose square I can put it where I want it to be which is basically over on the right hand side of the screen so when you click on this when you're playing you're going to make a new square. Let's run the game and I'll show you what we've done so far. So, so far, that square appears, but you can't do anything with it, and that's it. Nothing, when we bump into it, nothing happens because it's just an area 2D, so it's not, um, it's not involved in the physics of the game. <clears throat> really, probably, we don't want to be able to drag things all the way over here, um, but that'll do, do us for now. Um, so, while we're doing this, let's make another one which is for choosing a triangle. So, again, we want an area 2D. And inside it, we want a collision polygon, uh, polygon 2D. And again, by the way, I'm, I'm just sticking to using uh, collision polygons rather than um, what I think I probably should be using uh, if I've got it to work right, which is um, a collision shape instead of a collision polygon. Because I'm guessing the, um, the physics simulation works better. Um, it works quicker if you use a shape rather than a polygon because it, the shapes are kind of known uh, shapes. However, um, 
when I tried to use that, it didn't work. So I gave up on that for now. And hopefully at some point, someone will make a comment that helps me figure that out or there'll be a bug reported in um, uh, in GoDot that um, fixes the problem or something, I don't know. So again, I'm going to make it red, but make it a bit darker than the real triangle so that it um, fades away slightly and doesn't look as exciting as the real stuff. And again, I lock it all together and drag it all over here. And let's just put this menu stuff on the right and near, sort of near the top. And we'll have some more shapes maybe at some point. Uh, so now I've made a square and a triangle in the right. They don't do anything yet. Uh, they're maybe not dark enough. They don't look, they don't kind of fade away as much as I was expecting. So a tiny bit darker. Like so, so now we've got our menu, and um, when we turn this into a real game, we'll probably make the separation between the menu and the um, real game a bit clearer, but we get the idea for now. Um, so that's all the stuff we need to do in terms of clicking around in the user interface. What we need to do now is write a bit of code um, that makes a new square appear when you click on the square. So we'll go into our script and we'll have a look at where we want to change stuff. So uh, again, it's possible that there's actually a better way of making this stuff happen. Um, at the moment, I'm ending up with a lot of code in the world, and maybe it would be better to put some kind of on-click event on the shapes, but because I had this problem with interacting with the physics engine, um, all the stuff that I've had to do so far, I've definitely had to do in this way, where um, we're not listening for events on those objects because those objects are, are caught up in the physics simulation already. So we're just dealing with events in the world um, and then affecting the way the objects move uh, in a kind of um, indirect way. Um, so I'm going to continue working in that way um, here as well, even though um, it's beginning to feel a little bit messy that we're uh, writing a lot of code inside world when really this code is to do with um, that square and that triangle we've just drawn. I think it's going to work and we're not going to end up with a huge amount of code here, so um, this is still maintainable enough, I should think. So, um, what we do when you click, so if you remember the code from last time, uh, that, that video is called Go Dot Drag and Drop Physics Objects, I think. And that follows on from the one before. There's a, there's a, a playlist on YouTube where they're in order, so you should be able to follow through in order, look in my playlists and, and the YouTube dot com slash user slash a j balam b a l double a m um anyway so that was a distraction um so um yeah what we do is if you if you click if a click happens and the click was is like a downward click as in you, you press the mouse down then we end up in this bit of code here so at the moment there's not much code we're just saying um find find uh, what shape you clicked on um, and then if the shape's uh, null, as in you didn't click on anything, we just return. Otherwise, um, we set that shape to be uh, the shape that you're dragging around. Well, we're going to extend this a bit, and we're going to say, um, if you didn't click on one of the shapes, maybe you did click on a menu item. So we're going to say, um, we're going to, again, use the trick I used last time of pretending we've written a function that we haven't written yet. So we're going to make a variable called menu item. And we're going to call this fictitious function called find colliding menu item. And again, we pass in like where you clicked, which is the position that came in with the event. So let's imagine that exists. Um, and the answer goes back into this variable menu item. And we're basically going to say if, uh, if you did click on a menu item, we're going to do some stuff. Um, and that, that, so we are asking if menu item, that basically means if menu item is not null, because find colliding menu item is going to return null if we didn't find anything. So if, if, if you did click on a menu item, we're going to do something, which we'll do in a sec. Otherwise, so put an else here, we're just going to return like we did before. So basically, if you didn't click on a shape and you didn't click on a menu item, then we just return. Otherwise, if you did click on a menu item, that's the bit we're going to fill in. So what we're going to do is find out which menu item you clicked on 
and then make a new instance of the corresponding shape to that. So first of all, let's get the name of the menu item, because remember I said we're going to use the name to find out which one you clicked on. Ah, that actually reminds me. I need to check whether I renamed the, the triangle menu item to the right thing. So let's go back to there. Um, no, it's still called Area 2D. So let's rename that, otherwise this isn't going to work, to Choose Triangle. So now this is going to work because we're, as I said, we're depending crucially on the names of these things, choose square and choose triangle. So we'll go back to our script. And now we're going to get hold of the name of the thing we clicked on. So um, we're going to get hold, hold that in a new variable. So new shape name. Just a variable to hold the name of our shape. And because we found the, the thing you clicked on was menu item. Uh, and then that has a dot name which tells you the name of the menu item and what we're going to do is we're going to get all the characters in that name except we're going to skip over the first six I mean skip over the word choose basically so the name of the shape we want to make is going to be the name of the menu item except with the first six characters stripped off um, so uh, now we know the name of the shape that we want uh, now we can get hold of um, the scene and we can make a new instance of it so let's first of all let's get hold of the scene so if we say oh, new shape scene and then what we can do is we can just load up the scene now this is probably a bit inefficient and a bit later we'll do it in a better way but for now we can do load which means um, this is the way we get hold of a scene so we can um, you can see it's offering me autocomplete, so some of the th scenes that we can load are triangle.tscn and square.tscn. Now we don't know which one yet, so we're going to use this name, new shape name, whoops, that should be a plus, new shape name, and as you saw, we need a .tscn afterwards. .tscn, give ourselves a bit more room here. So. Um, this load command will load up that scene and now once we've got that scene loaded we can make a new instance of it. And the way we make a new instance of it is we, we say new shape scene as in the thing we just loaded up dot instance so we're basically making a new shape so previously we, we were finding what shape you clicked on and doing something this time we're making a new shape, but we're still going to set shape to be that. So essentially, as soon as we've created it, we're also going to be dragging it. And that's going to work out nicely, conveniently for us. So what we've done so far, find out from the name of the menu item what shape we want. Load up the scene, which is that shape. So essentially just um, anything you want to make a new instance of has to be a scene. So we made them into separate scenes, as you saw. Now we're using that the name that we know to load up that scene dynamically in the middle of our code. Um, and now we're making a new instance of that scene. So now we've got a shape, um, which would be a rigid body 2D, because that's what those things are. So we've made a new instance of it, but at the moment that new instance is probably in the wrong place. It's probably actually in the kind of default place for, for the square or the triangle. So we need to make sure that we put it in the right place. Make a new set position for that. And then the other thing we need to do is we need to actually put this shape into our scene. At the moment, uh, we've made one, but we haven't put it anywhere. So the way that we're going <clears> to <throat> make one is we're going to get hold of the um, that kind of folder object we made called shapes. And we're going to call add child. And put our new shape inside it like that. Um, so... Uh, that makes a new instance of the shape. So the, the part that's missing, other than the fact that um, this is a bit inefficient, I wouldn't want to do this every time. So actually, um, as we go forward with this game, I'll, I'll load up this stuff uh, earlier and then just reuse it here. But for now, we can just do this. It, get, it gives you the idea. And also, I'll do the same thing with shapes rather than calling get node every time. But those are just details. Um, so uh, essentially, what we've done so far is we've said, Find out which menu item you clicked on, 
get hold of its name, take off the first six characters, and now we know what shape we want. Load up the scene that is that shape. Make a new instance of that scene, so now we've got the shape we want. Now set the position um, of that thing to be where we clicked, instead of being somewhere over the other side of the screen. Um, make sure that um, we are actually dragging it. Um, uh, uh, or we know which shape we're dragging. This, with this, the new thing is the thing we're dragging. Then get hold of the shapes folder and add this shape in there. So now it's actually visible and in the scene. And then we finished and we come out in here and we tell that shape that it's being dragged. Um, so everything is done except find colliding menu item isn't actually written. So we better write that, I guess, otherwise it's not going to work. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to basically do something that's almost identical to find colliding shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to change find colliding shape. Let's call it find colliding in because it's going to be finding stuff inside a folder. So we change this function to say find find what you collide what the this position collides with in this folder. And by folder I just mean it's going to be either shapes or it's going to be menu because those are the folder objects that we created. So we've changed this function from find colliding shape to find colliding in and what it's in is in this folder. So we need to still have a find colliding shape function because we're still using it up, up above. But actually now it's pretty easy to write because we can just say find colliding in um, shapes Pause. So we've re-implemented find colliding shape so that it works the same as it did before because we pass in shapes and shapes gets used in here to say look inside there. Uh, and we can also say the function we were actually trying to write, which was find colliding menu item. So in this case it's going to be exactly the same as find colliding shape, except instead of looking at shapes, we look in menu. So let's see, say what we've done. Now just in case you can't remember what happened in the previous video, let's have a quick look through the rest of the code and figure out what's happening. So this is a bit where if you clicked somewhere, and we've just added some new stuff to say if you clicked on a menu item, create a new shape. You've also got if you stopped clicking, um, then we kind of let go of the shape and give it a bit of a kick so the physics kicks back in. Then we've got um, if you move the mouse, then if, the shape, if there's a shape being dragged, then um, tell that shape to move. Uh, by setting a variable inside that shape which actually gets dealt with inside um, the shape itself in the in the shape.gd file. Uh, and then we've got these two utility functions that go and find what you collided with inside either by looking for whether you collided with anything in that shapes folder and whether you collided with anything in the menu folder. So then the implementation of this function basically says move our special shape, special invisible shape called pointer, um, put it um, put it where you're looking and then ask, do you, did you collide by this sort of slightly complicated looking bit of code? But basically, you were asking, does the pointer collide with um, any of the shapes in that folder? If it does, return the thing that it collided with. So with any luck, if we run our game, we should now be able to click on those menu items and get a new instance of a, a square or a triangle. And look, it works. So now you get to start having real fun because this at this point, when I first got this working, I must have spent about the next half hour just piling shapes on top of each other and seeing what happened. Well, what we probably should do for the end of this video is fix the fact that that shape appears behind uh, the other ones, but I'll leave that as an exercise for you, the viewer. Instead, I'm just going to drop a whole load of squares and triangles on top of each other until someone stops me. See you next time.